Ahoy, and welcome to the Jolly Reader. I'm your host, Captain Book. Okay, we're finishing The Cousins by Karen M. McManus, part three, chapters 17 through 26, plus the epilogue, pages 215 to 321. It gets crazy. So, before we start, it's a couple days after, but I just want to say happy Mother's Day to all my crew out there and my mom who recently joined our crew and has been listening to the episodes. So happy Mother's Day, Mama. So I guess we'll get into it. Also, side note, on Instagram, I posted the family tree because I know this has been getting confusing and I've been referencing it a lot. So if you're kind of confused on whose parent is related to what cousin or whatever, just look on my Instagram. Ahoy, crew. Here's the tea. No, really. I'm talking about tea right now. Plum Deluxe Tea. It's a loose leaf tea, which is really easy to do. I'm never doing bag teas again. I'm telling you right now. Also, it's all hand blended, fresh, best ingredients. There's bold black teas. I like the Reading Nook blend black tea. And I'm not just saying that because the name's adorable. I'm saying that because I didn't know I like black tea, but man, this went down smooth. It tasted great. They also have relaxing herbal blends, dessert teas. There's a vanilla sugar cookie dessert tea. It smells and tastes like a real sugar cookie. Oh, and I forgot to mention, they have a tea of the month club, which gets you free shipping and other amazing perks. I very much am going to continue to support this small business. And if you like to, too, you can visit plumdeluxe.com slash listen and use the code JOLLYREADER to save 12% on your first order. T makes a great gift. That's plumdeluxe.com slash listen, J-O-L-L-Y-R-E-A-D-E-R. I think I'm going to go brew myself some now. Bye. Okay. Highlights from last time. We find out that Jonah's dad, his biological dad, was the biggest victim of Anders' Ponzi scheme. Allison got pregnant by Matt 24 years ago when she was 18. The youngest story sibling, Archer, has been disguised as bartender Chaz and Dr. Baxter drowned in a river behind his house. Honestly, I'm not sure if it was a river or like a stream or whatever, but water behind his house. Okay, things to look forward to. Aubrey throwing down with basically everyone. A missing birthmark, a twist ending we could have never seen coming, and me screaming. So let's do it. Chapter 17, Aubrey, my first note, I'm screaming. So (laughs) Millie and Jonah are caught. Oh, duh. Okay. So last time we left off, I didn't even put that on the summary from last time. Millie and Jonah are making out at this freaking gala. Okay. So Millie and Jonah are caught by basically everyone, but that isn't even the craziest part. So Mildred says, your parents were nothing but disappointments and you're entirely the same. And she like looks at Jonah and she's like, I shouldn't be surprised that Anders' son is utterly depraved. So Aubrey, she's there. She's frozen. She's like, this is a train wreck. And she wants to explain everything, but she doesn't really know how. Like she wants to be like, Jonah's not really our cousin, but then that obviously opens up a ton of other stuff. So Jonah speaks, or should I say, screams up and says, I have a message from Anders. He effing hates your guts and always has. And she's like, clutch my pearls. So are you guys ready for this next part? A voice says, what a vicious lie from an imposter. And it's, that was a drum roll. (laughs) Anders. Anders is at the gala. So Donald looks at Mildred and he's like, leave now. So she's just like, bye. And she walks out. She doesn't even like stay to see what Anders has to say. So Anders goes on to say that he saw a picture of fake Jonah at Dr. Baxter's funeral, standing with the cousins. And then him and JT kind of put pieced everything together and was like, this person's impersonating my son or whatever. And JT's there as well, like at the gala. And he's like, agreeing but we know that jt paid jonah and both jonah and Aubrey say that like that's not true jt set all this up he's a monster so anders shuts them down and starts playing victim classic narcissist crap so whatever anders basically like you know you knew that he wasn't really your cousin and you went along with it and you expect all these people to believe you now like 
no way or whatever. So then Anders also brings up that Archer brought them to the island to try to get back into the will, which we know is not true. Anders has the audacity, all caps, to say this to Aubrey. I can understand why you went along with it. Your father's a tough customer. It's so hard to earn his love, isn't it? Like, what a freaking low blow. And also, are you speaking from freaking experience or what? I'm fired up this episode, if you can't tell. So then Anders is like, where's my mother? Because Mildred needs to know that one of her grandchildren is honest and blah, blah, blah. Because he wants to get back in the will, obviously. So Donald's like, enough of this. So he calls for security to take away Anders, JT, and Jonah. And then Anders yells, like, as he's being dragged out, this is my home, not yours. It's mine, it's mine, or whatever. It's it's just a show, like, obviously he wants money. So Aubrey makes her way to Millie, who's, like, just been kind of frozen this whole time. And they're talking, and Millie's figured out, kind of pieced it together, that Jonah, his whole point of coming to the island is because he hates the Story family because he wants to get back at Anders for bankrupting his family and she thinks like what her and Jonah had was fake like he was faking it with her and Aubrey tries to reassure her that like he really does like her and she's reading too much into it so the chapter ends with Donald telling the girls to go back to their dorms and he'll deal with them later and I said is Donald going to end up the good guy in all this because for half a second I thought he might be like trying to protect the quote-unquote cousins but that's wrong so (laughs) We'll get into it. Chapter 18, Jonah. So Jonah's being escorted out of the resort and he's being put up in a hotel in town. The security guards are telling him this. And they say he can make plans to fly out and has one day to leave. But he must be on the ferry sometime tomorrow, no matter what. And then after that, if he doesn't get a flight, whatever, that's his problem. So he texts Millie that he's sorry, obviously, but she doesn't respond. Jonah says that he wished he would have grabbed her hand and explained everything and they could have faced this all together. But instead, he let his anger get the best of him, which it's okay, Jonah. They're trash monsters. I understand. So in the hotel, like before he checks in, he sees Anders and JT because apparently they got escorted to the same hotel. And Jonah's like yelling, this is all your fault. And JT just shrugs and says, like, you're the one that couldn't manage to lay low. And then Jonah says, actually, this is Anders' fault for messing up like my family's life. And Anders says that, This is so like, ugh. so Anders is like, your parents are adults. They can invest their money how they want. I mean, it's true, but also like what Anders did was illegal. So anyways, he tells Jonah to stop shifting blame because it's pathetic. And then the security card's like, enough, like, let's go up to your room. So he takes Jonah to his room. Jonah puts off telling his parents, especially because he received a text from his parents earlier saying that bankruptcy court went well and they can keep the business. So now it says I'm screaming again. Jonah hears a knock at his door and he almost doesn't recognize the clean shaven man in front of him. It's Archer. Hey, Jonah, can I come in? Because, you know, you just got thrown out of my mom's party. So (laughs) Archer wasn't at the gala. So he's like, I know you're not my nephew. It's already going around what happened. And that Anders is there and stuff. So Jonah tells him the whole story about Anders and his family, blah, blah, blah. Archer apologizes for dragging them, being the cousins, through all this and not getting back in contact with them after when they first met him and then the doctor sending that letter or whatever. And Archer says he went on a bender and never talked to the doctor because he was drunk that day and then obviously the doctor died. So... Archer plans on heading back to the bungalow for a few days to check on slash apologize to Aubrey and Millie. And then he's going to head off the island for good because he just thinks he's making a mess of things. So Jonas asks him, can I come with you? And Archer's like, "Um, dude, you know, I'm an alcoholic. Like, I can't be responsible for you. And Jonah's like, I'm almost 18. Whatever. And then Jonah's like, do you really want your mother to get her way every time she orders Donald to kick someone off the island? And Archer's like, all right. You can come with me, kid. Chapter 19, Millie. So Aubrey and Millie are called to talk to Donald. And he tells them basically the same thing he did with Jonah about you have to get off the island. Here's ferry tickets. Then you got to call your parents, whatever. But they have three days instead of the one day. So Mildred wants to see Aubrey before they leave. And Millie's obviously upset by this. And Mildred wants to talk to Aubrey alone as a representative for the cousins. And Aubrey's like, I don't want to do that. 
So Donald says that's up to her, but there'll be a car waiting to pick her up and it'll wait 15 minutes. And I think that's supposed to be the next day or like in the afternoon. So they leave his office or whatever. And then Millie sees a text from Archer and she gets an idea like we should go visit him. But she does not know that Jonah's there. And she's like obviously upset because she's not talking to him because he didn't stand up for her, et cetera, et cetera. Spoiler alert. They work it out. (laughs) So anyways, Archer apologizes whatever so they hear a knock on the door and it's hazel she says she was going through dr baxter like her grandpa's stuff and she found another envelope and it's for archer well it's for her but it it mentions archer in it so it starts off and it's like hazel you've grown up to be such an amazing woman blah 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 but then it says i'm afraid to face the consequences of my actions but even more afraid that soon i won't remember them so i guess he really does have dementia but we'll see And then it says, I've done a grave injustice to Archer's story, but the letter ends, so it doesn't go any further than that. So Archer's like, there's no injustices on my end. Like, he's always just been our family doctor, no problems. So Hazel says also, and I don't know if this was like with the letter or she just found it and thought it might be interesting, but she found Kayla's autopsy report, and I don't know why I said that, like, I was British, but autopsy report and there's nothing that stands out about it like archer's looking through it but he wants to keep it and show it to una who if we remember is kayla's sister to see if she notices anything different because obviously they would have received the family would have received a copy so archer tells them that the story kids being like him and his siblings were disinherited shortly before kayla's death not after because if you remember aubrey thought like something happened to kayla and then assumed that Anders was probably involved and that's why Mildred disowned them but now Archer's telling us Kayla died it was like back-to-back problems like they got disinherited and then like a month later Kayla died so it was just like crazy so Hazel leaves and Archer and Aubrey give Millie and Jonah some space to talk and Jonah apologizes, but Millie isn't having it, which sounds dumb, but I am like so this way, which maybe is like a toxic trait, but it's like, fool me once and we'll never talk again. <laughs> fool me twice. You'll never get that chance to do that. So anyways, Millie says that he should have told her and Aubrey sooner that like his family was caught up in Anders' scheme. And Jonah says he wanted to get his revenge at lunch like when they or i guess brunch when they went to brunch with mildred but didn't want to hurt millie and aubrey so millie's fighting back tears of fury which that's me cry when you're mad and archer and aubrey come back into the room because the girls have to go catch the car for aubrey's meeting with mildred so before they leave archer kind of like gently suggests to millie to try forgiveness unlike the other story family member i promise it picks up okay allison age 18 august 1996 Allison, oh yeah, this part. Uh, okay. Allison and Anders are in a coffee shop that's across the street from the flower shop that Matt works at, and she is there to tell Matt she's pregnant. And Anders is like, "Just do it." So Allison's about to chicken out, and Matt walks into the coffee shop, and Allison's like, "Uh, I can't just tell him in this coffee shop that I'm pregnant or whatever." So Anders like, "Just go ask him to take a walk." So she's like, "Hey, um, can we take a walk? I need to talk to you." And Matt looks at her and says, look, um, I had fun at Rob's party, but it was just fun. So stop calling me because I'm not interested. And the only thing I guess I'll ever agree with Anders is he's like, you should thank my sister for even giving you the time of day, which I agree because Allison is like a really nice, good character. And for Matt to be like, "Mm, leave me alone. Like, it's okay to not be interested, but you don't have to be freaking rude about it. So anyways, Matt and Anders get into a verbal argument about Kayla, basically, because like, obviously, Anders kind of gives a crap about his sister, but really is like mad that Matt and Kayla are dating or whatever, on and off again, cheated, whatever. So Matt says they've been together for weeks, like him and Kayla have been together for weeks, and lots of people on the island don't care about Anders or any of the stories, which you're going to say that right in front of Allison, like she's been nothing but nice to you. And the only thing she ever did wrong was have a crush on Matt. So anyways, Matt walks out and Kayla comes running up to him and they just start like making out. And Anders wants to run out there and just like tell them Allison's pregnant, but Allison stops him because that would be really unreasonable. So Kayla sees Anders and Allison from the window and like blows them a kiss and starts making out with Matt even more. So like two trash monsters belong to each other. 
So then Allison starts bleeding down her leg and has pain in her stomach. So she miscarries, unfortunately. So then it kind of like jumps to a week later and the bleeding stops, but only Anders knows. And of course, she wants to talk about it, etc. But she doesn't. So she's going downstairs and she walks past her mom, Dr. Baxter, Donald and Teresa in the kitchen. And Anders, like side note, has been telling his siblings that he's convinced that Dr. Baxter, who is married, and Donald are courting Mildred for her money. But the other siblings are like, nah, but you know, that wouldn't be too far fetched. So Allison goes out to the beach because that's where her brothers Anders and Adams are. They don't see her, but she overhears them. That happens a lot in this this section. But anyways, so Adam suggests Anders gets Matt and Kayla fired like as revenge. But Anders like, oh, that's not enough for them to lose like minimum wage jobs. So then Anders apparently told Adam about the pregnancy, which Allison's furious about. But anyways, and at first Allison thinks that Adam's being protected. He's just like saying stuff that seems like protective. But then he says it didn't occur to him, like him being Matt, that our family is completely out of his league. Imagine mother sharing a bastard grandchild with her assistant. That's not how the next generation is supposed to start. Thank God it's done with. And of course, Allison is completely heartbroken over this and she like does not want to hear anymore. So she decides to go back inside instead of meeting up with the boys. So Anders is still talking about Matt and Kayla because of course he like cannot get it off his mind. And he's going to make Allison's situation about him. But then like as she's walking away, Allison overhears Anders say the world would be a better place without them in it being Matt and Kayla. And ding. Where is Matt present day? Like, we do not know at this point. Like, is he dead or alive? Did he run away? Did he kill Kayla? We have no idea. Chapter 20, Aubrey. Aubrey throws down. That should be the title of this chapter. (laughs) So Aubrey isn't mad at Jonah for keeping the secret about Anders and his family because she came to Ireland with her own secrets about her dad, obviously with the pregnancy and stuff. She says that Jonah plotting against Uncle Anders while falling for Millie makes him more one of us than a borrowed birth certificate ever did. Agreed. So Aubrey's getting texts from both her mom and dad, and her dad basically is just disappointed in her. And Aubrey's mom is like, I wanted you to hear it from me. Your swim coach went public with the pregnancy, and it's going to be a boy. Which if you remember from, I believe, last episode, Aubrey, maybe it was the first episode, but Aubrey says, oh, my dad always wanted a boy or whatever because trash so Aubrey hasn't directly told her mom this before so she takes the chance to now and she's like I'm with you no matter what happens next like figuratively and literally like move out of the house with you if that's what you want so then she gets a call from Thomas and she's like fine guess we're breaking hearts today he's like dude did your dad knock up your swim coach and she's like is this why you really called and he's like yeah and then she's like um, you and I are broken up. And he's like, we are? Duh, dumb ba dum Anyways, so she lays it out to him like, you ignored me all summer and then I ignored you. So that's pretty much a breakup, right? And he tells her that he wanted to break up for a while but thought she didn't because that's reason not to break up with someone. Please. So then she basically says like, it was a comfortable situation. That's why she stayed with him. But they should have broken up like months after they got together in eighth grade. So then Aubrey's just like, well, I'm glad we got that cleared up. Enjoy your summer. Click. Which is awesome. So like a boss. So then the car's coming to like pick the girls up. Except for it's supposed to be just Aubrey, but Millie does not care. She's going to. So they get to Mildred's house and Teresa's waiting for them. And she's like, Millie, wait in the car. You weren't invited. And Millie's like, um, why don't you and I just watch the baseball game like the Yankees and the Red Sox are playing? Which for the record, I'm a White Sox fan. Just throwing it out there. I hate the Yankees. Who doesn't? Probably Yankee fans hate the Yankees. Anyways. Okay. So this part, I'm like, I'm not sure how this is connected, but I was like trying to piece it together, but I'll just tell you because now I know. So Allison was the only Yankee fan in her family. And that's something like her and Teresa had in common. But like now present day, Teresa's like, I don't watch baseball, but that could totally just be her being like, Millie, leave me alone. Go back to the car. So 
Aubrey heads in to see her grandmother and Mildred says to Aubrey that like you seem the most sensible of your cousins and Aubrey's like the most easy to manipulate you know so Mildred asks about Adam because she's obsessed obviously she only ever asks about their parents she said she wondered if Aubrey was anything like him which we know she's not thank goodness then Mildred says the reason she brought Aubrey there to talk bottom of page 255 let me grab it what I'd like to tell you now is that the ties I severed with my children 24 years ago are absolute. It was a mistake to allow you into my life, and it's not one I'll make again. I can't force you to leave the island, of course, but I hope that you do. This is my home, and you are not welcome here. That's like super savage, if you ask me. But anyways, Aubrey's like, you don't even want to know us or our parents now. Like, people change. It's been a long time. And Mildred goes, is your father worth knowing? Like, dang. And Aubrey's like, "Mm." she didn't say this, but she's like, yeah, like, not really. He's trash. So she responds instead with saying he could have been, which is totally true. But Mildred doesn't live in a world of could haves. So Aubrey decides to go. She's like, fine, I'll leave you alone. But first, she has something to ask Mildred. So she's like, is there something unusual about how Kayla Douglas died? And Mildred's startled, to say the least. And she's like, how do you, what on earth are you talking about? And Aubrey's like trying to play it cool. She's trying to pour a cup of hot coffee, but she's so nervous. She knocks it all over Mildred. And Mildred like rips off her gloves, like running around. Teresa comes in to clean it up. And she's like, get out of my house. And Aubrey's, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like, I really didn't mean to. Because of course, Aubrey's not trying to burn this decrepit old woman. So she like leaves the room. But before she does, she kind of gets like lost in the house and she ends up in this library room and she sees a silver card laying on the table and it's the same card the driver used to like open the gates to Catmint House. So she like steals it, pretty much assuming they're going to break in at some point. Chapter 21, Jonah. Ah, uh, I'm screaming. i <laughs> like, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. I'm screaming again. I'm screaming again. Okay, anyways, my notes say ah, uh, exclamation points i'm screaming again lots of information i don't even remember exactly what happens but it must be good so first jonah officially missed his ferry deadline to leave the island and they're all at archer's bungalow having a cookout being like the cousins and millie still isn't talking to jonah but she's less chilly towards him and it's also this is like a super side note but it's mentioned that carson like their boss took the jeep keys from the girls immediately and then he gave them to Ephraim who's Jonah's old roommate so that he could drive the girls around so like basically Carson's like a really good guy and not a part of this because he's trying to like help them out so Una comes to the cookout and she looks over the autopsy and she says in the family copy it just says that Kayla was drunk but in this copy for Archer it says Kayla had lorazepam which is a sedative in her system. So Una says Kayla was a drinker, but never did drugs. And she feels guilty because she's like, oh my God, my sister have a drug problem. And everyone else is like, no, she was probably drugged. So basically they're trying to find out if Dr. Baxter made a mistake on the autopsy. And then like, oh, I thought there was drugs in her system. I was wrong. Here's the real copy. Or was he trying to cover it up? So the confusing part of the note is that Dr. Baxter said he did an injustice to Archer, but this is like them all talking about it but this cover-up would seemingly be an injustice to anders since he was like really upset when kayla died even though they had recently broken up again so una tells them that kayla went to visit anders at harvard over that thanksgiving before she died and she came back like super upset and they had broken up but she wouldn't tell una what happened she just said i need to talk to Teresa," which is also really odd because kayla and matt dated but they weren't like bringing home to your parents kind of relationship if you know what i mean So Millie's like, wait a second, Teresa has a son? And Archer's like, did, did past tense. So apparently, we're about to scream, Matt died a year before Kayla. So this is around like Allison's backlash time period, which we totally get into later in the book. And he died at Cuddy Beach, which is that beach that Adam mentions in his book. So all the stories were kids were at this party that was like wild drinking party and it was like stormy and no one realized that Matt was gone until it was too late. This is kind of like Archer saying this and Allison insisted that they should call the police and the Coast Guard didn't find Matt's body until the morning and it was really horrible. Chapter 22, Millie. So Millie, it falls out of her pocket, but Millie sees a car that Aubrey swiped from Mildred's house 
and that could get them into catmint, but they don't have a plan for that yet. But that comes around, obviously. So Jonah brings up that Anders and Teresa keep getting brought up in all of this, obviously. So his theory is that maybe Teresa lost it when Matt died and killed Kayla and had Dr. Baxter cover it up. And then Mildred learned about this, but was too dependent on Teresa at this point after cutting off her kids. And so I just kind of say like something's definitely going on, but I don't know if that's fully it. Like it seems weird that you cut off your kids and you're like, I'm too dependent on this murderer. So I guess I'll just keep her around. So we'll explain later. So Aubrey goes to bed. They're all staying at the bungalow and Millie and Jonah stay up and they forgive each other. It's like a whole thing, but like, you don't really need to know. I don't know. They like each other. Obviously, it's fine. So Jonah asks her, since no one's around this time, unlike at the gala, if Millie wants to try kissing again. And she does. (laughs) Chapter 23, Aubrey. So Aubrey can't sleep. So she's like, I'm calling my dad like a boss. So she says to him, this is wild. She goes, if you can apologize for cheating with my swim coach, then maybe I can forgive you or start to. And he's like, well, Aubrey, you see, it takes two people to keep a marriage going. And luckily she cuts him off and is like, you can't blame my mom for you cheating. Like, that's ridiculous. So then she's like, tell me about Kayla Douglas. And Adam's like, She got drunk and crashed her car into a tree. And he sounds irritated, but not rattled. So then Aubrey asks about Cuddy Beach, because it's in his book, and Matt Ryan. And Adam says, why are you fixated on decade-old tragedies? What happened to Matt was a terrible accident and has nothing to do with my mother. And Aubrey says she thinks that he's wrong, but doesn't know why she thinks that. She's still piecing it all together. And I'm like, me neither, girl. I don't know. I don't know. I literally didn't know until they like flat out explained the whole thing to me. So anyways, she tells her dad to be honest for once in his life and tell her what happened. And Adam insists that nothing happened. Aubrey says, you're lying, and then hangs up on him, which agreed. So it's the next morning, and Aubrey says, eight o'clock is too early to wake anyone up. What? Okay. I mean, there's no toddlers around be like standing over you at 7 a.m. saying, Mom, do you want to play Mario Monopoly? Which is how my morning started today. So anyways, I just kind of put here, I said, I don't know how to explain this, but apparently Aubrey figured it out. So I'll just tell you what happens in the book without any spoilers, because up until this point, I have no idea. So Aubrey thinks about the picture of Mildred and Adam hanging in the coffee shop, if you remember from like two sections ago and she says she was looking at the wrong thing she was examining mildred's face because mildred was happy and like loved her son and whatever but when she should have been looking at mildred's hands and then she says they were bare of gloves for once wrinkled and aged but otherwise unblemished which means like not from the picture because she would have been young in that picture it explains it but this is like my thought process at the time so aubrey grabs the gate card from her pocket and is determined to get what she needs to prove that she's right. Okay, so they spent the night. She didn't bring a phone charger. Her phone's about to die. She gets one text out to Archer, but we don't know what it says right now. And then her phone dies. So she heads off on her mission. And I am so excited that Aubrey's our hero. Because like you kind of think that Millie's going to be the hero, which Millie's awesome, but I'm super excited that Aubrey gets to solve the case. Chapter 24, Jonah. So it's apparently late enough in the day for everyone to be up for once. And Archer tells Jonah and Millie about the strange text he received from Aubrey. And the text just says there wasn't a birthmark. So they don't know what that means because Aubrey does have a birthmark on her arm. So why would she be talking about that? And I say here, and I'm really sorry. I can't remember, but I think it's mentioned that Aubrey has a birthmark like her father. So I'm assuming that in the coffee shop photo, he doesn't. But why does the grandmother's hands matter? I was wrong, but I'm not going to spoil it. So we'll just get into that when the time comes. So I have OMG, what? So Hazel comes back over because she found something else in Dr. Baxter's things. It's a medical report for Mildred, a diagnosis for hypertropic cardiomyopathy. So this is the same condition that her husband had and obviously is deadly because he died from it. But 
no one knew that the husband, Abraham, Mildred's husband, had it until after he died. So Archer thinks this is just a mistake because Mildred's name is on the post-mortem diagnosis for Abraham. So none of this makes sense. So Abraham died in 1995 and the paperwork is from 1996 and they have the same condition. Like this is crazy. And then obviously she's still running around this island. So Millie starts piecing things together. So she talks about Teresa and wanting to watch the baseball game. And Teresa's like, I don't watch baseball. And Archer points out that that's weird that she said that because she's a huge Yankees fan like Allison, which I explained. So Kayla had something to tell Teresa and then she died. Dr. Baxter had something to tell Archer and then he died. So what if they're not the only people that died? There wasn't a birthmark. So Millie, if you're following, because <laughs> this is like confusing. So Millie puts together that when Aubrey spilled the coffee, when Mildred wanted to talk to her before they left, Mildred took off her gloves and she must have noticed that there was no birthmark and that Aubrey saw in the picture that matches hers. So like just... I know it's confusing. Basically, Millie saying that she thinks that Mildred died. And when Mildred removed her glove, she should have had a birthmark because she's a matching one to Aubrey. And we can see it in the picture from the coffee shop. So we know she has it for sure. And then Aubrey's like trying to confirm that whoever this Mildred person in the house is, isn't really their grandmother. Millie basically lays all that out. And Archer's like losing it. He's like, no, that's my mom. I don't believe any of this. Y'all crazy. And then he's like, people would know it's not her, which that's a super valid point. But also Millie says, not if you refuse to see them anymore. So she cut out all her kids. None of them have seen her face to face. It's also suspicious that when Anders showed up at the gala, Donald told Mildred to leave immediately. And she does. So like Anders didn't get to see her close up. Archer mentions that he hasn't seen her around the island. So then Archer says, well, Donald and Teresa and Dr. Baxter would know. So why would they cover this up if it's not really her? And Millie's like, well, money's a good motivator. And so we know, obviously, like, Donald likes money because he's trash. So, like, whatever. And then Millie asked Hazel if Dr. Baxter came into money 24 years ago. And Hazel's like, yes, he did. Which, what? So uh, apparently Dr. Baxter is a big, or was, a big gambler and had a ton of debt, like, to the point that his wife was about to leave him. But then he starts quote unquote, winning big and kept winning ever since. So that's suspect. And then Millie thinks that there's more with Teresa and I agree, but they don't figure it out yet. So then Millie realizes that Aubrey must have gone to Cat Mint right now by herself. So Archer is freaking out. Clearly, I would be too. I was when I was reading it. But then Millie tells him like, even if you don't believe all this, like that someone's impersonating your mom, you have to believe that like Aubrey is currently in a bad situation. So he asks Hazel to drive them over there to help Aubrey. And I say, even I can't. How is there still things? I don't fully know. 40 pages left. This was so hard to figure out. Okay. It seems so obvious now going back through this now that I know like the full answer. But while I was reading it, I was like, I don't know what's going on. Okay. Allison, age 18, August 1996. We're at the Wild Beach Party that Archer mentioned earlier that Matt drowned at. So Archer and Allison are kind of like talking. They're playing with a puppy. It's like really adorable, but also not relevant to the story. So Archer then goes off with one of his friends and Allison's ready to go home because like Matt's at the party and it's uncomfortable and she doesn't really know anyone. Also like side note, Kayla works late for Donald's office on weekends. So she's not there, but it's still like super awkward. So Allison wants to go home. So she's trying to find Adam or Anders to take her home. And she's like looking around the party. She doesn't see Adam. She doesn't see Anders. And she doesn't see Matt, who she's been actively avoiding. But their cars are still in the parking lot. So they like have to be at the party. So she's worried that they're picking a fight with Matt like her brothers are. And Allison's still mad at Matt. But she doesn't think like two against one is fair. And I don't know. She doesn't want anything bad to happen. So she keeps walking and she spots Adam and Anders on a pier on another part of the beach away from the party. And it's behind like these cabanas that people use to hook up in, I guess, but no one's in there. So she hears Adam say, you see anything? And they're looking into the water and Anders says, no, and we won't with this undertow. And Adam laughs, but it sounds on edge. And he's like, remind me not to piss you off. 
And Allison's ready to walk away, but instead she decides to like be brave and she reaches out for Adam and she's like, what are you guys doing? And Anders says, taking care of a problem. <laughs> what could that mean? Like obviously taking care of Matt. We get into it, full details. It's crazy. Chapter 25, Aubrey. So Aubrey gets the cat mint and she uses the card or whatever. And then she finds like an open window and crawls through it. And she's creeping through the house and she wants to find something belonging to Mildred to prove that she isn't actually their biological grandmother. I would assume like a hairbrush or something. So then Aubrey stumbles upon her dad's old room and she sees the same picture that was hanging in the coffee shop. And there's definitely a birthmark in the picture. Then she hears behind her, lovely picture, isn't it? And it's fake Mildred holding a gun. (laughs) It's about to go down. So stop everything you're doing and focus because we're about to just like explode everything. So fake Mildred, as I'll refer to her for now, informs Aubrey that they're alerted when the gate key is being used. So she opened the window to let Aubrey come in, which is just like slick. So Aubrey's like, well, I want to see my dad's old room and here it is. So I'll just be going now. (laughs) And fake Mildred's like, uh, no. And then she's like, wouldn't it be a shame if I mistook you for an intruder and shot you in your father's room? It's like, whoa, okay, this is escalating. So Aubrey's like, "Uh, I told Archer and Millie and Jonah that I'm here. So good luck with that. And fake Mildred's like, then why are you here alone? All caps, I have screaming. Aubrey's like, what'd you do to my grandmother? And fake Mildred's like, nothing. She died of natural causes 24 years ago, and I found her here in Adam's room. He was always Mildred's favorite. Okay, have you figured it out yet? Because I didn't until Aubrey says, you're Teresa, and the other Teresa, question mark? So fake Mildred, who we know now is Teresa, doesn't deny it and replies that she took everything she could from Adam all these years, but it never felt like enough. So she says, maybe taking his only child would be enough. After all, he took mine. And then Aubrey's like, my father killed your son, being Matt. And she's like, in a manner of speaking, like, what the what? So they hear a noise and it's car driving across the yard and Archer jumps out of the car. So Teresa tells Paula to, who is someone you shouldn't know yet, to put Archer in the sunroom and Aubrey would be down in a minute. So just like for the sake of explaining things we find out that paula is Teresa's like real sister who has been pretending to be Teresa. so Teresa is fake mildred fake Teresa is her sister paula i know okay so archer they go downstairs whatever archer is realizing that what millie was saying was true like it really isn't his mother so before Teresa starts explaining she tells paula like go light a fire in the south parlor and then like go we gotta talk so she asks Teresa if she's sure and Teresa's like Yep, positive. Go. So here's what happened. So this is Teresa explaining everything. Anders got drunk and told Kayla this is when she went to visit him over Thanksgiving. What really happened to Matt? So Anders lied and told at this party told Matt that Kayla had been swept away by the tide. So Matt went in to rescue her. Even though Kayla was never at the party, but I'm assuming like since Matt was probably drunk, he was like, Oh, I gotta go save her. So Anders knew that it was unlikely that Matt would ever come out because of the undertow. And Adam's just standing there and lets him go in. So when Dr. Baxter says about Adam, foolish boy could have changed it all in a word. It's basically like Adam could have stopped it. So Teresa tells Archer that Anders always hated Matt and resented him even more after he found out that Allison got pregnant that summer. And Archer is shocked by this information. Like he never knew his sister was pregnant or miscarried. So then Teresa says that Allison knew what happened to Matt and at least sounded the alarm that he was missing, but she was a coward and protected her brothers. So that's kind of why she like ignores Millie because her beef isn't like super with Allison. So then she asked what happened. Aubrey asked what happened to Kayla. So after Mildred died, Teresa and Donald came up with the idea for Teresa to impersonate Mildred because the story kids would run through all her money. And they wrote Dr. Baxter in as well and then brought Paula in and wrote the you know what you did letter. So Kayla kept wanting to see Teresa to know if Mildred disinherited her children because of what Kayla told Teresa about Matt's death. And Donald saw this as a loose end, so he took care of her. And then Teresa's like, me and Dr. Baxter found out later about like Kayla's death. And Archer's like, oh, you're too sane. She's so innocent in this, like whatever. Archer asks if that's what happened to Dr. Baxter too. Like if Donald saw him as a loose end and 
uh, got rid of him because he wanted to talk. And Teresa doesn't answer, but she presses the gun into Aubrey's neck. But we're to assume that's what happened. So Teresa says that Adam is the worst of all of them, like all the story kids. Teresa always stood up for him and would have done anything for him. Adam had the chance to save Matt with one word, stop. And he didn't. She says that Adam doesn't know what it's like to lose a child, but he should find out. So Archer tells Teresa to settle the score with him instead of Aubrey. And he was like, I was at that party too. I could have done something. And Teresa said that Kayla told her that Archer didn't know he was off doing his own thing. So Archer looks at Aubrey like in this fatherly way. And then he lies to Teresa and says he did know to like try to save her. So Teresa turns a gun on Archer, and when she does, Aubrey plows into her, knocking her to the floor, and then Aubrey falls on top of her. The gun goes off, and there's a red pool around Aubrey. (sighs) Okay, so Archer is above Aubrey and lifts her up. Teresa's on the ground, not moving, other than breathing heavily. And Aubrey's like, I think I shot her. And Archer's like, um, she shot herself. Don't even blame yourself. She's a monster. So neither Archer or Aubrey have phones, but Aubrey's like, something is wrong. She smells smoke and remembers that Teresa asked Paula to light a fire. They open the door to the hallway and the floor is slick and wet. And before they can go anywhere, it bursts into flames. So they go back into the sunroom and Archer picks up Teresa trying to get her up and like up the stairs. And, but there's flames over there too. And the bookshelves in the room they're in have started to catch fire. So he puts Teresa on a chair and they bust out a window with a chair and it's too far for them to jump. So Archer and Aubrey make a rope out of curtains and Aubrey goes down first. It doesn't go all the way to the ground, so she has to jump. She lands on the ground and mildly gets hurt, like hurts her foot. It's difficult for her to stand, but it's about a six foot jump, so it's not too bad. The house is in flames and smoke is billowing out of the room she came from and Aubrey is calling for Archer. Then she finally sees Archer on the rope with Teresa slung over his shoulder. And Aubrey's like, drop her, drop her. She's not worth it, but he's not because he's awesome. So he's slowly crawling down the makeshift rope. And the room is like super on fire. So the rope goes slack because it burns through whatever they tied it to. And both Archer and Teresa fall to the ground. So Aubrey crawls over to them lying on the ground. And Teresa is dead and her eyes are empty. And Archer is unconscious but has a faint pulse. Chapter 26, Millie. Crazy. So we find out that Catmint burned to the ground and Paula has not been found by police and Millie believes that she made off with a fake passport and the money they stole from Mildred. Donald was arrested in his office and is awaiting trial. Aubrey sprained her ankle, but she's okay. Archer had a concussion and minor injuries, but he's okay. And then they said that Teresa died from smoke inhalation before she hit the ground. So Archer's still a hero, and Aubrey didn't murder her with a gun, accidentally. So Allison shows up and has been taking care of Archer and helping the police and lawyers untangle everything, etc. Millie has wanted to ask her mom about Matt and everything, but Allison keeps saying, no questions, okay, let's just get through today. Every day she's been there, because I think it's been like a week. And Anders left the island, because obviously he was there for the gala, and gives a single interview that says, it's all lies about Kayla's story, made up by a bitter ex-girlfriend, may she rest in peace, of course, like a jerk. And then Adam hasn't given an interview, but through a spokesperson, he says basically the same thing as Anders. Consequently... Adam's book is now a bestseller. Ugh. So Aubrey and Jonah are leaving tomorrow and Millie will leave shortly after. She'll be staying with her dad while her mom deals with this mess of the family and stuff. So everyone's in the kitchen and Archer says, basically like explaining that like the words of a dead girl told by a person committing mass fraud isn't enough to convict Anders and Adam of like Matt's murder, but they still have to live with themselves. So that's like justice. Is it though? So then Aubrey tells them that her mom got an apartment and both her and her mom will be moving into the new apartment when she gets home, which is awesome. Go Aubrey's mom. Archer is going to check into a rehab center and then he leaves, like he tells them that, and then he leaves Aubrey, Millie, and Jonah to like finish up whatever they're doing. So Aubrey talks about maybe getting back on the swim team because they're getting a new coach since the old one's going on maternity leave. And since Millie will be with her father in New York, she'll be closer to Jonah and they're like a couple now, whatever. So hours later, Archer and Allison are talking and they invite Millie to join them. And Archer apologizes for everything Allison had to go through alone that summer with the pregnancy and everything. And Allison's ready to talk about 
what happened. So she says she was sad and relieved when she miscarried and she didn't hate Matt, but just how he acted, like especially at the coffee shop and stuff. So Anders told Allison like what he did to Matt. She was horrified, but didn't know what to do. And every day she wanted to tell someone. So she thought it was her fault. Like Anders did this for her. And like she provoked Anders like saying that stuff about like Kayla would rather be with Matt, blah, blah, blah. So after a year, she realized that Anders did all this for himself but she didn't know how to bring it back up. Like, obviously, you're like 18 or 19. Your brother's like indirectly murdered someone. I don't know how you say anything about that. Like, I'm kind of on her side. That'd be crazy. So anyways, so she figured out that Andrew's just like a selfish butt. And she wouldn't tell someone. But then that letter from Donald comes like, you know what you did. So then she felt like, oh, maybe we all deserve this except for Archer to be like disinherited. So she thinks if she said something that like maybe their mother would still be with them. But... Archer's like, she had a heart condition. But my thing is, I'll just say it here. Like, what's the odds that the grandma, Mildred, and the husband, Abraham, had the same heart condition and died within a year of each other? Like, I guess it is kind of like up in the air that like maybe Teresa and them did kill her and not like just find her there. Or maybe like Donald did it or something. Like, who knows? Or she could have just died. Like, it's all just wild. So Allison also feels guilty about Kayla, obviously. Because she's gone because of what Allison did, which she didn't. It was Donald's decision, which is basically what Archer says. But I understand. So then Anders did love Kayla as much as he was capable of. And it must have hurt him that what he did to Matt resulted in Kayla's death. Because, like, obviously, I don't think Anders, I don't know, maybe he would have ended up killing her. But the thought process is he wouldn't have. So then Archer says that he doesn't judge Allison for keeping quiet, obviously. And it wouldn't have saved Matt. But Adam could have said something at the time and saved him. And father did say family first always. Gross. And Allison said that their father would have been horrified by the situation. And then Archer corrects her and is like, no, he would have been horrified at Adam and Anders. Archer takes a phone call like randomly during that. And Allison apologizes to Millie for not being like a super connected mother and everything. And Millie's like, you know, I understand now better and we can make up and whatever. And then Allison tells Millie that she told Millie's father about Matt and the pregnancy, but not about what Anders did and how she protected him. And like all that guilt like bubbled up and she just like couldn't be the best mom she wanted to be. So Allison and Millie's relationships on the mend. And then Archer returns and he was talking to one of Donald's employees who's going to like keep them in the loop if anything interesting came up. So apparently Cat Mint, the house, wasn't insured or anything. The policy had lapsed because there hadn't been payments on the policy for over a year. All the properties that the stories own on the island are in foreclosure. Donald and Teresa were selling art to live on and they spent every last penny of the story estate. So like that was kind of crazy because when Teresa is talking to Aubrey, she says her and Donald came up with this plan because the story kids would spend all the money, but they spent all the money. Idiots. Epilogue. Jonah. Five months later. So we're at the end. So Aubrey is visiting, not Aubrey. Wow. Millie's visiting Jonah and they're in love, of course. My note literally said Aubrey. No, Millie. Okay. So anyways, basically when the dust settled, there was barely any money left. Donald, Teresa, Dr. Baxter, and Paula were living the high life, extravagant trips, priceless art, expensive renovations, etc. Dr. Baxter was gambling away millions of dollars a year. I can't even imagine that. And then Donald's like barely working. So he was just like spending the money. Archer moved back to the island and is living a simple, sober life. Adam, his book fell off the bestseller list after two weeks. And it was like thought that maybe people would ask him to write a sequel, but really people want to know like, the true story about what happened with Matt and stuff. And he's like, obviously not going to write about that. Allison's doing well, living a normal life, their own business, etc. Anders is starting a quote unquote new venture, but he's basically full of it and like doesn't disclose what the venture is. Paula is still at large and Jonah kind of like describes her as an enigma and all this. Like, who is this person? Teresa calls her one day and is like, hey, come impersonate me. She like leaves her job and just goes and like no big deal. And then is pretending to be another person for like 25 years. That's insane. And Jonah kind of like relates. It was hard to pretend to be JT just for the short time in the summer, like a month. 
So he kind of feels bad for her, but he would never say that because Millie would lose her mind about that. So Millie and Jonah sit down because they're going to FaceTime with Aubrey, who's holding her two-month-old baby brother, baby half-brother, whatever, who she loves, of course, because it's Aubrey. And she says that her dad, Adam, and Coach Mats- Matson or whatever, her swim coach, are not talking about marriage anymore. Adam has burned through his money, the little money they got from the state, and refuses to get a job, even though the coach wants to be a stay-at-home mom with a baby. So the coach took a job a few towns over. So their relationship's crumbling. And then Millie's like looking at the baby, and she's like, I'm going to call you karma. <laughs> so, okay, here's the, like, of course. Karen and McManus, she always does this. So it's the very end of the book. Get ready to scream. Jonah receives a postcard in the mail from a New York address, which we know is where I didn't say this, but this is where Paula like originally lived before she got up to go be Teresa. He gets a postcard and the handwriting resembles the letters that the cousins received when fake Mildred went, said she went to Boston, like when they first got there. So he's like, that was either written by Teresa or Paula or Paula. So I'm going to read the letter. Jonah, I hear that you, Millie, and Aubrey are doing well, and I am glad, truly. I bear you no ill will, and while I suppose it is fanciful to imagine that you and your quote-unquote cousins might reciprocate that sentiment, I hope it is the case. From one imposter to another, I'd like to give you some words of advice. Keep your parents far away from Anders Story's new venture. I have a strong suspicion that it will one day, as they say, go up in flames. Family first always. P. That's it. Book's over. Book's over. (sighs) Okay. Let's get into lingering questions. It was kind of hard to come up with lingering questions because it was all like wrapped up in a bow, but... My first question is, why would Paula care if the quote unquote cousins are doing well when she literally tried to burn Aubrey alive? (laughs) And then like, I'm kind of thinking that when Paula found out that the cousins were coming to the island or like after they had gotten there, this was kind of her plan all along. In this whole situation, she was the quote unquote help while Dr. Baxter and the lawyer and Teresa were spending the money like crazy. She was still like just working for her sister. I mean, I'm sure she like reaped some of the benefits, but it's not like she was going off doing whatever she wanted by herself. Her sister's clearly unstable and obsessed with this whole like Matt and Adam thing. And Paula, like throughout the book, I didn't really mention it, but she's like encouraging Teresa to sell this priceless art and stuff. She didn't give Donald any heads up after everything was going down. So he got arrested. So I guess like kind of my theory is that when she knew the cousins got there, she like kind of encouraged all this to be found out because then she could just take what money was left and just like go and live her life however she wanted, which is wild. My other question is why did she end the letter with family first always? Now this could just be like kind of an ode to the grandpa's gravestone and like kind of everything going on, but like the letters to Jonah. So it kind of makes you wonder if like maybe they're related in some sort of way. I don't know. That's like maybe a wild theory, but it's just something out there. And then I guess like kind of my last question just for like me is like, what was the real Mildred like? Because this whole story, we have just kind of decided to hate her over nothing. And she seemed like a pretty like normal person. She's like hard on her kids and stuff, but I don't know. She loved like Allison talked like really highly of her. And she just seemed like heartbroken after the grandpa like Abraham passed away. But then they get this disinheriting letter and all the kids are like, well, cool. I guess we're not talking anymore. Like that just seems kind of odd because like Mildred didn't seem like such a bad person, I guess. So I want to hear if you guys like this book, didn't like this book. I looked up the reviews after I was done and there was like a lot of mixed feedback. Like some people didn't like that it wasn't very predictable, which I'm the opposite. You know, I hate when it's too predictable. Some people thought the book was like too childish and I'm like, it's a young adult book. It's not going to be gory and like sex scenes all over the place. So I like, hello, but I liked it. I like her books. I will say I liked Two Can Keep a Secret better. So I don't know. I liked it. I just kind of want to know what you said or what you think. So in closing, as always, thank you for listening. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at the Jolly Reader Podcast subscribe so you can get notifications for future episodes if you're on apple 
please leave a review to help other crewmates find their podcast slash make my day. Um, please share and discuss and scream about this podcast. If you like secondhand embarrassment, stay tuned for the outtakes. And next time we will be covering the book, The Cheerleaders by Kara Thomas. I believe it's Kara. It might be Kara. I really think it's Kara though. And I will read the back in typical dramatic fashion. There are no more cheerleaders in the town of Sunnybrook. <laughs> okay, here we go. First, there was a car accident. Not long after, the murders happen. Monica's sister was the last cheerleader to die after her suicide. Sunnybrook High disbanded the cheer squad. No one wanted to be reminded of what happened. That was five years ago. Now the faculty and students at Sunnybrook want to remember the lost cheerleaders. But for Monica, it's not that easy. She just wants to forget. Only Monica's world is starting to unravel. There are the letters in her stepdad's desk. Ooh. <laughs> An unearthed years old cell phone. A strange new friend at school. Dot, dot, dot. Whatever happened five years ago isn't over. Some people in town know more than they're saying. And somehow, Monica is in the center of it all. There are no more cheerleaders in Sunnybrook. But that doesn't mean anyone else is safe. Do, 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 do. So this book is actually recommended by Karen M. McManus. That's why I bought it. So sharp, brilliantly plotted, and engrossing was her review. So I'm excited to get into that next time. So we'll see. Get excited. So I'll talk to you next time for the first part of The Cheerleaders. Until we sail again, this has been The Jolly Reader. Own voyage. Hey, we made it to the outtakes. Let's do it. Testing. I'm ready to record and finish this book because it's crazy. Okay, checking it. Highlights. La, la. Things to look at. La, la, la. Man, I'm already all over the place. Okay. <clears throat> Especially because he had just received like previously that day. I feel like I said like a lot this episode. I'm going to try to cut that. So anyways, saying that like bankruptcy, I just said it again. So they head out. Oh, okay. So then they, they knock on the door and oh, no, no. Okay. So they're all like talking. So Una tells them that Kayla went to visit. Okay. So, oh no, I can't spoil that. Okay. Oh, my cat one's out of the room. Stop. A diagnosis for hyper hyper hold on hypertropic cardiomyopathy. Millie starts pushing. Millie starts piercing. Why can't I talk today? Anders or Adams could have stopped. Adams. I am Allie, and you are with me to my mom.